What's up, people? Jay here along with Dalton and Cass, and we just got back to the hotel from... Uh, I, I, I would say we got back to the hotel from WrestleMania, but we got back to the hotel from a goddamn trek. Ghetto. <laughs> Took a little detour on the way Yes. This is um, ghetto. No, we went through everything tonight. Yeah, we went through <laughs> downtown. Yeah, went through the ghetto. Yeah, we saw... I, I think we heard Vince Russo talking. Yeah, at a bar. That, that was funny. Yeah. It, really certain. It sounded like him. It had that not accent. Not too many people sound like him. You know, I, I didn't hear any thing. bros, so That's I don't know. Maybe though. it wasn't him. <laughs> but, um, yes, uh, you know, rewind a few hours. We were at WrestleMania, and we got a lot of stuff to talk about in this review. This is going to be a proper review. I know we put up that video earlier with us in the arena as everything was starting to calm down, but we took a little bit of time to digest all of the festivities tonight, and let's go ahead and discuss. I want to open at the close of WrestleMania. You're going to make me cry again. This was Roman Reigns versus The Undertaker, the main event of WrestleMania and Roman Reigns defeated the Undertaker. Wait, now he should have. He should have. We're at a point where the Undertaker he no longer has an undefeated streak, but still, this is a very big moment. Roman Reigns is only the second person in history to defeat the Undertaker at WrestleMania. Of course, following um, Brock Lesnar, but this match this was definitely an interesting one. Let me go ahead and state for the record: Roman Reigns did have one of the loudest. Um, Pops. The loudest reactions. It, it, yeah. it was it was completely ridiculous. Like they were just like like people that hate Israel. It is real. Surrounded by Orlando fans who want nothing to do with Roman. I know and friends Dalton that most of them are idiots, but that's <laughs> I mean, no I'm offense, not, I'm not but from, most of them are idiots. I'm not from Orlando, so that ain't me. <laughs> but uh, I share the state with these people. I mean, Roman's getting you still suck chance even after doing larger spots in the match. The uh, the spear of the Undertaker on the outside, uh, and, he, and he really doesn't get enough credit because, um, let's be honest here, dissecting the match, it was not a blowaway match. It was built for the moment that closed mm -hmm. out the evening. And you know an interesting thing about that? Now that you said that statement, that could be said for a few matches tonight. You know, yeah. the match itself wasn't the attraction. It's what happened after the match. But, um... For me, this was an interesting match to sit back and watch, just seeing how the stories was being told in the ring with um, The Undertaker. You can tell that the story was that he was on his last leg, and this was a, you know, someone from a past generation fighting to hold on to what made them this big star and you know he's the you know the, the 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 big dog in town and you know they call roman reigns a big dog and then they you know refer to the undertaker as the original big dog and he's trying to hold on to that just desperately with that last grasp and then the uh, roman reigns i really liked what happened at the end where he was just mm -hmm. bouncing around yeah on the ropes just going back and forth and it was sad at the same time because in, at that point and a few other points in the match it's like the undertaker was like what's 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 going, what's going on? on like watching, watching a younger generation just passing you by i actually equated the spot where uh, roman reigns is running back and forth across the ropes as if it's a dog claiming his own territory you know marking mm -hmm. his territory in his own owner's yard yeah how they like circle the same spot yeah, yeah that but that now nah, might might work was definitely something to be whole like range i really wish felt did you so when, when they setting. when they recapped the ending of the match and you actually heard what what the screams between Reigns and Undertaker mm -hmm. in the match, I was like, you know what? Despite the fact that we in the crowd cannot hear what's going on in the ring, it almost would have been better if we could have been able to. Yes, like, and that's one thing that I do have to give uh, credit for the non mic mic work from Roman Reigns. There was one the point balls. where he was pummeling um, Undertaker in the corner and he stopped in the middle of it and he was, he was saying something. That's something that I really need to see from Roman Reigns more often. Just attitude. And Cass actually mentioned this um, during the match at some point where he was like, hell, if the crowd is booing you, own that shit. Play into yeah. it. Like, it, 
get it. You know, mess with him a little bit. And I love the attitude as as the match progressed because Undertaker, he was getting this offense in early on, but it's it's kind of like the match went like this. As Undertaker was going down, Roman Reigns was rising, he was getting more yeah, confident, yeah. and you know, he was you know, giving him that attitude and, you know, having a bit of an edge. And I really like that about the match. Um, one point, though, we do have to discuss. It looked as if Reigns was going to go for a tombstone. It Something was, was happening in the match. Fault, people. Yeah, and it's, the the <laughs> terrible part about that is, like, um, Dalton, your girlfriend was there, uh, Sarah, and we were talking, and she... She's not really into wrestling. No, she? she's a casual fan. Yeah, and she she watched it and she was like, that but that wasn't Rain's fault. Like uh it, it's like the Undertaker. He couldn't, you know, get the couldn't little muster boost. himself up. Yeah, to- couldn't have that momentum to, you know, help Roman Reigns in the spot. And we, she was like, Yeah, that's not Roman Reigns' fault. And we're like, doesn't matter. They're gonna yeah, they, And they immediately really after that there are people in the crowd trying to start a um, you can't wrestle chant. And of course, they weren't talking about the Undertaker. They were talking about that, Roman How about going in that ring and try to circle and re- wrestle circles around a man that's been in this business for the last 25 something years? And let, let me see you try to wrestle that, the dead man. But um, yeah, it, I mean, what can you do in that? Situation. Of course, nobody's gonna sit up and blame yeah. the Undertaker, you know. But so. what's funny is the fact that we did not. We only found out that this was a no holds bar match. Ironically, right when the match started, which I was going like, okay, they're definitely doing that to hide some flaws. I mean, not not necessarily flaws, but just stuff that Taker can't really necessarily. I like, think about it. What was the last time he was able to like go run towards the ropes and jump to the outside? I, I noticed that he didn't do his usual dive over the top rope mm-hmm. spot. That the the WrestleMania. Oh, like on, I on almost would have. Where he walks on the ropes and he does. Like yeah, the he arm didn't do his old he school either. Yeah, he I can't would, do the old school. Anymore. I was uh, I was almost expecting Roman to do the dive spot because he's yeah. he's done that in the past before. I think they didn't mention um, in the build that this would be a no holds barred match. Like it was yeah. news to me. It was news to all of us when it got announced as the match was starting, and uh, I think that was mostly done just to give credence to the outside spots that that were, that were had, such that the ref wasn't counting while yeah. the spots were going yeah. on. Um, but yeah, I think we we've covered the bases fairly well. It yeah. was not. It was certainly wasn't an unenjoyable moment. Everybody in Orlando was just, just wanting to cut Reigns' throat. But but at the end of it, I oh, think the complete was story was told. Yeah, yeah. the torch I, was I, I passed. Was... Undertaker did the respectful thing, and ultimately laid down his ensemble in the ring, taking the off hat. his coat, his gloves, his hat. Putting it back all, putting it all back on, then taking it off. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. how we saw. That, that was a little, that was a little <laughs> weird. That was a little, that was a little yeah. crazy, but I, mm-hmm. well, we get like people. This is my very first WrestleMania, and my first WrestleMania is the mania where Taker had his last match, and I was literally, and Jake can attest to this because he was giving <laughs> that me on the show. Like I was just up in tears. Like I just really love. I mean, I had my moment man. too. Where I had to put on my sunglasses like this, and you know, yeah. And that's the only time this weekend those sunglasses actually were good for something. That's around the point. They were good for blocking the, the sun. sun. <laughs> yeah, but um, for the under the Undertaker was literally the very first WWE superstar I ever saw, way back in 1999. Him and uh, Kane, but yeah, just knowing the connection that I had to him as a child and being able to go through all of those stages of his career even that you know american badass that stuff Mm -hmm. you know but i don't know why people shit on that i really it's not that it was bad it's did you see the damn entrance that he had at wrestlemania y'all saw my goosebumps yes we saw the goosebumps like it's just such an amazing gimmick where it's like man this is it you hit a Mm -hmm. sweet spot right there you got an a plus and but you, you look at The Undertaker and you know if something like that debuted right now, wouldn't work. You, you know, when you look 25 years in the future, you're not going to have the same type of yeah, person, definitely. that persona, that aura that surrounds uh, this man here. But for some reason, what The Undertaker brings to the table, it works. And just um, every single time that I've seen his entrance live, it's just like, oh, my God, this is 
a sight to see. I'm in awe of it, and yeah. it was no different tonight. But real quick, I do want to mention the fact that since ESPN did confirm that it was Taker's last match tonight, so that definitely does lack the star power in terms of Mania in the future because that's one part-timer that WWE will not have anymore. So it's like, it's going to be interesting to see over the next year what they're going to try to do to get people to tune in, not just for next year, but just many years to come. Okay, uh, before we get into the actual show, let's uh, quickly cover some of these pre-show uh, matches. Oh, quickly. Cruiserweight champion Neville versus Austin Aries. I really like this Beautiful match. match. We actually walked into this match uh, a few minutes late. Thank uh, goodness. Getting into the arena was a bit of a hassle. Thankfully, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to yeah. be. It certainly wasn't anything close to what it was for uh, those who were in attendance last year at 32 so you know kudos there um we beat y'all <laughs> uh as far as the match goes i really enjoyed this match mm-hmm. it was a great way to kick it off mm-hmm. uh, kick off the pre-show rather um great back and forth action the crowd the crowd at least our section was thoroughly behind both aries and neville um support on both uh, men's ends and ultimately the king of the cruiserweights the right man won yeah, def- definitely. While all his name, like, that was just, again, I said that he should have walked out because he's just been on way too good of a hot streak. And no offense to Austin Aries, he's good, but he's only been in the division for a month now. So it's like, if you're going to give, I think the end game is to give Aries the Cruiserweight Championship eventually, but. Yeah, yeah no it, need it, to do yeah, it this it's, early. It's not, it's not his time. It's Don't not. rush it. Yeah, Neville was definitely in a hot streak. I like that he, um,. He had some shenanigans to lead him to uh, victory uh, towards the end of this match because I think that that says a lot to the level of competition that Austin Aries, you know, brought to the table. And that's a story that they can explore going forward. So we haven't seen the last of Austin Aries versus Neville, and I am glad for that. I can't wait to see what they have um, in store moving forward. And speaking of moving forward, let's go on to the next match. The fourth annual Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. Four already. Yeah, Four yeah. already. I'm Four. News to me. <laughs> yeah, uh, Mojo Raleigh won this one with a little bit of help from his buddy which Rob shocked, Gronkowski. Which shocked the hell out of me. Yeah, the, and the funny thing about that, we were sitting there watching the match, and I see everything that's uh, going on, and... Of course, we don't hear the commentary, so we don't know uh, what's going on. That's I'm looking cool. at uh, ringside, and I see the camera down there, mm-hmm. and it, it was Jinder Mahal. And I'm like, man, that guy in that white shirt, he is really getting into it. Like, he was, yeah, yeah, and then, and then, then doing all of this. I lean over, I'm like, Jay, that's Rob Gronkowski of the yeah. New England Patriots. Yeah, and I was like, oh, shit. And, and then, you know, time goes on, and he gets involved in the match. It was fun stuff. I'm quite sure it'll be all on ESPN yeah, and, that, and you know, awesome. stuff like that. Yeah, that, that also was the mango. This match actually turned out to be a lot more fun than I than I gave it credit for. But, I mean, I will say, though, I don't like the fact that Strowman and Big Show got yeah. eliminated early because mm-hmm. Strowman is still... I'm not saying that he is in a in a right place right now, but they need to get him out of that rut since the Reigns loss, and this would have been a good way because you got to keep it up because they still see something in Strowman. And as far as Big Show... I love Big Show. It's just I would have liked to see him get more. Oh, really? Like, there was a lot of people that we thought should not have gone out. Like Luke Harper was definitely one of them. Yeah. You remember how the our section, for whatever reason, they they had all of the people who could not fucking stand Dolph Ziggler in the yeah. same section. Every single time that dude went him. over the ropes and he was like on the ring they apron, like, oh. get him out of here. Kick his ass over the ropes. That was me. <laughs> no, there were a ton of people. Yeah, like a lot. lot of people. I think... Who was it that was trying to eliminate Ziggler specifically? I forgot. Uh, was who. it Killian Dane? Yeah. I forgot who it was. Was it Luke Harper? Yeah, Luke that Harper. Big Everybody at some point tried yeah, to get Ziggler's yeah, ass yeah, out of there. Time. Whoever it was, yeah, for for some reason, everybody in our section wanted Dolph Ziggler to well, get out of there. Real quick on Killian Dane. Of course, if you guys don't know him, he is one of the members of Sanity from uh, NXT. I will say this. I am happy to see someone from NXT get a spot. And the fact that he was able to last 
long in that in that whole thing, so that definitely proves uh, his importance to the company. Yeah, Killian Dane did impress me, um, especially since I wasn't familiar with his work prior to this match. Um, didn't blow me away, but looking forward to seeing more. Um, touching on what Cass said, I was surprised that both Big Show and Braun Strowman were eliminated as early as they were. Uh, Strowman was my shoe-in pick, but I'm not disappointed with Mojo Rawley. Uh, I'm not crazy <laughs> about who he is as a character, but yeah. the fact that Rob Gronkowski... I like Mojo. <laughs> the fact that Rob Gronkowski uh, did play in the finish certainly means WWE will get a lot of media attention. Mm. This will be on ESPN, uh, other sports organizations, headlines, so uh, I think it was serviceable. I enjoyed it more than I thought I was going to. Okay, next match, this was uh, also the pre-show, uh, Dean Ambrose versus oh Baron boy. Corbin. Oh Dean no. Ambrose retains oh, here. <laughs> this yeah. match was the drizzling shits. I did like the... Um, Reversal of the end of days into okay. I'll give it that. Yeah, yeah dirty that. deeds. That was a good sequence. Um, oh, and I also like that Corbin had the wherewithal to big boot. Yes, yes. that was during nice. The slingshot was, mm -hmm. That might. I think that might have been the only time I've seen somebody have the wherewithal to avoid and that. Smart maneuver. enough. Mm -hmm. So that. That was, Baron Corbin, good that was, job there. That was smart. And also the deep six. That's one of my favorite movies. Yeah. I don't know why that's not his finish, though, and I think it used to be. I mean, but the deep six and uh, end of dates, they both look awesome. So. I mean, but this match, I do feel bad for both Dean and Barry Corbin because these guys, for a good week, found were learned that they were going to be on the main card. Imagine being these competitors and finding like a good like 24 hours later, and now you're going to be on the kickoff show. So I know... They were definitely probably stilling. I mean, how couldn't you? Not yeah, if you look at where Dean Ambrose yeah. was last year mm -hmm. versus uh, Brock Lesnar, then here on the pre-show. This is a big step down. Mm -hmm. and of course, Dean Ambrose retained his Intercontinental Championship. Like I said, like I said in the preview, like I wouldn't mad or upset that Dean retained because I just think again the end game is to give Baron Corbin the title but yeah it wouldn't have made sense to do it here you would have just been giving him the title just for a sake of a moment and said it could have been much bigger okay let's move on to the main show now this uh, first match of the night uh, we were kind of surprised that this was the opener of yes. the main show yeah. AJ Styles versus Shane McMahon AJ Styles ends up winning this match with the Styles Clash right uh, uh, no 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 for him. Phenomenal yeah, yeah, forearm. It, oh, there, there was a spot where he went for the Styles class. And was like, he didn't fully hook the chain no. Yeah, and, and, and Shane sloppy kicked out of that. As the the match. I mean, but I mean the um the sequence leading into that. Yeah, it was, that was uh, rough. It was not. No, it was nice. Not yet. I, I like the sequence really? leading into it, where uh, AJ went for the uh four four fifty. Shane caught him in the um. I, I didn't think the transition into the Styles class was smooth though. Yeah, I'm. I'll give him an A for effort. I, I, I like it the was, effort. It was creative. Yeah, it was I, I saw the intent, and I'll give them uh, props. But this the match, up to, but this match, I'll tell you, like, like I said, we didn't even think this was gonna like kick off the show, which isn't really. It's not a bad thing, and what we saw out of this match was definitely good stuff, in my opinion. But it's just, it's still kind of hard for me to get behind the fact that someone that Shane and man given his age, is able to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with the in-ring prowess of AJ Styles. Well, see here. Especially since it's not really a no holds barred stipulation, and I just don't like the fact that there was like a whole bunch of shenanigans going on, especially if you're having, you're kicking off a WrestleMania, like for the ref bump for that to happen. Well, see, here's the thing. Well, punch is hurt that ref no matter bump, how old oh, yeah. you are. That like, ref bump did look very realistic. I like that ref bump. I liked how yeah. it, like, it, it looked like the ref could have legitimately gotten caught in the cross fire and mm -hmm. could legitimately be knocked out you know most often you see ref bumps where somebody just ah. and you can see him coming from a mile away yeah. mostly and, and in that situation i didn't see it coming and when it actually happened i was like oh that was nice but the thing about shane like punches hurt no matter how old the person delivering the punches is and I, I'd, I'd be interested to s go back and listen to this match and listen to the commentary oh, no. the uh, narrative that was established here because from what i saw there was a lot of stuff that Shane was trying to do, but it wasn't crisp. Like, Shane was actually trying to wrestle tonight, but nothing that he was doing was really crisp. When he went for a move, he didn't fully lock it in or a submission. It wasn't fully, wasn't you know, clean. tight or yeah. anything like that. And I'm wondering if they told that story. Like, I'm not sitting here saying, oh, Shane sucked. 
what I'm saying is the story of the match was AJ Styles was like, I'm going to get in here and I'm going to out wrestle you. And Shane was like, oh, shit, well, he's going to out wrestle me. I got to bring some to the table in that regard. And it's like he wasn't fully equipped to be that person and, you know, go to toe to toe with AJ. So I, you know. AJ outclassed Shane. He out wrestled him, and I and and that's there. Shane he still brought a bit of that daredevilness oh. into the match, and I think that's what kept him competitive. See, what I also enjoyed is, um, yes, Shane's work wasn't as crisp as we might have hoped for. But at the end of the day, you have to know he's not an in ring technician. But what I did enjoy was that AJ gave Shane a couple of receipts in that match. There mm-hmm. were points where he was actually clocking him. Yeah. At least what, from our perspective, looked like to be mm-hmm. real, yeah. as if to say, like, okay, well, this is what you're going to bring. You're going to bring a potato. I'm going to bring a potato, too. Mm-hmm. And so I like that AJ almost answered in kind with the same kind of style that Shane would have brought. And mm-hmm. uh, if I'm being. Uh, honest here, I mentioned this in Jay's quick recap. Uh, in ring wise, I thought this match was the best of the evening. Um, spot wise, even though it was not you know, spot fest, it, it I don't think it was totally a spot. Yeah, fest. I don't think it was spot fest either. Uh, th- certainly, there were a weapon spots. You know, th- it was a they traditional Shane been. McMahon match, something you'd expect to see with Shane. But AJ on his half delivered more than enough, such that I could say it's it wasn't just. Weapon spot, weapon spot. Yeah, I saw a story being told, and honestly, I've come around on the overall story of AJ versus Shane because the way that I see it, it's like um, Shane, AJ is like, okay, dude, I'm the best wrestler on this fucking roster, and I don't have a match at WrestleMania. If you don't understand how good I am, if you don't think I'm good enough to be in a marquee match at WrestleMania, I'll just beat your ass. I'll show you at that. WrestleMania. And now and you, and you can feel it. You know, I'm sitting here and I'm telling you all of this. <laughs> I'll let you feel it. Then you'll know yeah. how good I am. Styles won, which was we well, we all kind of we all knew but it was like what they were like hinting to is there was a there could have been a good chance, but now we can finally get Styles away from this and we can finally get on to more important things, which I know we'll get into later. But the, I, I've come around. So this was important. Yeah, no, it, it, wasn't. Wasn't. It, it was. It was because it, it, the thing is, not. I was so caught up in, you know, AJ Styles deserves better at WrestleMania, but that's the exact reason why he was in this match because. The same things that I was thinking as a fan, he was thinking as a person in the show. Okay. It, even though it was not the smoothest execution, I'll still say that no. it was not the smoothest execution at all. But I, I at least I understand and I can you know look back in hindsight and enjoy some of it. Let's get AJ that rematch clause. Okay, the next match we had here was Kevin Owens versus. United States Champion Chris Jericho. Kevin Owens wins this one, and he is now the new. U.S. champion. When we got the bill for this match, throughout the, from from the lead in to Mania, was fantastic. But for me, it's like once we got to the match, I was like, okay, yeah, yeah that was that. Like it, it was a good match. Like don't get me wrong, it was a really good match. But it was just like I felt as if the build was so good that once we got to the match, it was kind of like it didn't balance out in my opinion. But Kevin Owens walks out. The United States Champion, which honestly was the one thing that I was happy to see the most. Kevin Owens got a huge pop when he when he came out. So yeah, maybe he could have. Maybe this one could have used a stipulation or something like yeah, that. Yeah, that was Just, the thing. Yeah, because this was like really a grudge match. There was a lot of Standard. nastiness that existed between these two. But I I enjoyed this match. I, I enjoyed it as well. Um, it kind of felt like a match where. Being that the friendship was ended, they're no longer aligned. You would have expected them to start the match coming yeah, out swinging. You go. Didn't they though? Uh, no, actually, you're right. I, I, I'm having a hard time remember the match. Actually, mm-hmm. they did. They they immediately ran that. into. <laughs> they immediately ran into dueling punches. So that actually did happen. Um, uh, I enjoyed the pop up power bomb into the code breaker spot. That was, you I, called I, that. I one. called the, I called several spots tonight. Uh, hope I didn't ruin anything for the kid right in front of us. Um, <laughs> it's allowed. I felt this match overall was enjoyable. I, I mean, I enjoyed several of the, the spots, but to be quite honest, I didn't get a match that was indicative of yeah. the build going into this. That's well, I will say, though, uh, Kevin Owens, he was selling it in his facial expressions. Oh, yeah. Like, he yeah. looked disgusted with Chris Jericho yeah, throughout point. the whole damn match. 
Right. So he, he, he sold it in that regard. But it's just that with everything that was happening at WrestleMania, this one really didn't stand out. Out. Yeah. It was not a bad match. I yeah, it was it, not a, it just all. it could have benefited from a stipulation that would have pushed it a bit further. Mm. Okay, and the next match that we'll be discussing from one championship to another, this was the uh, Fatal Four Way oh, Elimination boy. Match for the Raw Women's Championship: Bailey defending <laughs> versus Charlotte Flair, Sasha Banks, and Nia Jax. Okay, thing is with this one. I don't know what the hell happened at this point, but the lighting situation, it was Bright. terrible. I don't know if... <laughs> fuck that lighting guy. I don't know if any of the um, chants came through on screen, but yeah, it, there, like, there were many chants where people would, like, turn them damn lights off those, because it, it was... See. You know if you, like, look directly at a light bulb or something like that or at the sun or whatever it may be, and then you turn away, and yeah. then when you blink, like, you'll still see r residual light. Like, I don't know what it's called, but... Y'all know what I'm talking about. That was the issue. So every time I would look at what was going on in the ring, it would be the residual light right on the wrestler. So whatever yeah. you're looking at, that's where the light would be. And I could not see a friggin' thing. I had to sit there and watch, watch the on the uh, watch on the little you know display that they had above the ring. But um, even with that, though. I did not think that this match was yeah, all that good. Uh, no. no, the only uh, the sterling positive I can speak about is I'm glad they got rid of Nia Jax first because she had no place. But, but the thing a, is about spot, it though, there was a spot in that match where I think it was Bailey and uh, Sasha like trying to like really do a back suplex, mm -hmm. and then Charlotte kind of drop kicked uh, Nia Jax, and they were able to do it, and I think it turned it like into a German flex, but There way, were some nice spots with Nia in yeah. the match, but then the yeah. thing is, you say, oh, I'm glad that they eliminated her because she didn't have any part of the story. Shit, when they eliminated her, that <laughs> match, I didn't see any part of the story in anything that they were doing in the match, and it's like, if this was your ultimate goal, to have Bayley be the champion at the end of WrestleMania, what the hell was the point of her winning the championship on exactly. Raw? Because you just took the win out of the sails, and, you know, it could have been a much bigger moment yeah. had that been Bailey's first win. Because I'm sitting here, and I'm thinking, you're telling another story. You're telling the story of the slow burn heel turn for Sasha Banks, and that's all going to happen at WrestleMania. Like, I was sitting here thinking that, you know how there are some heels... They'll throw up roadblocks for you um, mm -hmm. for a face. Like what the authority did with Danny Bryan. I'm going to deny you your dream. I'm thinking that Sasha Banks is telling a story where it's it, it's in a sense where it's like, I'm not going to deny you your dream. I'm going to let you live your dream. Then I'm going to take it from you. And that pain that you feel knowing that you had something that you worked all of your life for and to have it snatched away from you on the biggest moment of your entire life, I'm thinking that that's the story that they were telling. And all of this stuff about, um, you know, Sasha Banks possibly, uh, you know, manipulating Bailey and this and that and yada, yada, yada. I didn't see a bit of that None. during this match. Actually, None of it. Now that I'm thinking more about it, um, with Sasha almost, you know, poking and prodding at Bailey to defend her dream, the fact that Sasha was eliminated by Charlotte and then Bailey on Charlotte. Kind of protects Bailey. I honestly think while Bailey and Sasha is a better story to be told in that they were friends and slowly but surely Sasha's, you know, like, I'm coming for you. Just know I'm your friend. I, I care about you. But eventually I'm going to take that, that what is, which is yours. I think the fact that Sasha was eliminated so early, because we were all shocked. We were, we were yes. like, what, what? And the crowd was pissed. I think the fact that she was gotten rid of second, um... Makes for a better, uh, makes me want to see Bailey Sasha more down the line. I think, well, see, as far as I was concerned, Bailey shouldn't have walked out of there with the title, and, and somehow, some way, Sasha needed to be involved with Bailey's elimination or just something that furthered that, that further told the story. Because I'm telling you guys, and I'm saying it sucks that I didn't upload the video, but shit, it's like WWE has gone in a completely different direction with the story. But there was a story to be told of Sasha Banks manipulating um, 
Bailey and just using her to get closer to the championship. And I think that more needed to be told between those two people specifically. And I just didn't like the booking. And why was this? this and why was this elimination style to begin with? Because honestly, it was like for me when Sasha Banks got out, it was like for me the sales just immediately. Yeah, and went. it's like the eliminations they kind of fell flat too. Like, like, like why is Charlotte losing via elbow, elbow drop? drop? Yeah, since where is an elbow drop a finisher? I mean, Randy's having just something to say. Well, had something to say about that. In the year 2017, though, like yeah, that was, mm, no, yeah, yeah it's, it's not. Strong. It's a weak finish. <clears throat> Okay. Well, apparently, like, I, I got a message from Charlie on Twitter saying Michael Cole called this one of the greatest matches in Yada. I'm going to have to go back and listen to that to see if... if I'm going to have to go back and, and, and see what the hell he was smoking. Like, I don't, like, like, let us know what you thought. Maybe we were seeing something different, yeah. you know. That's, Let's see if we can get on the same page. That's a, that's a clear Let's instance. get to the good part. That's a clear... Get him. <laughs> Let's get to the good part. Let's get to the best part. Let's get to the best part. Sure. Okay. Why not? Um, so next up, we had what we thought was going to be a triple threat ladder match for the Raw Tag Team Championship. It turned out to be a fatal four way with the returning Hardy Boys, which was so fucking crazy. Like, we're we're sitting here like, why in the hell is this match a ladder match? And None turns out people know how to use ladders. Well, it turns out, you know, somebody did. Boom. You're like, oh, ladders? You you called? You rang? So it turns out... It turns oh, and out, I like what they did with the New Day. Yeah. Them being, of course, the hosts of WrestleMania, having them come out there with their uh, ring attire on. I was like, no, nah, it's not us. Boom. All right, boys. A, once that music hit, it was just like, I lost my, my absolute shit. And thing, people, I was actually in the line getting food, so I actually missed a good chunk of this match, but... I went back and I went and I saw that and just I wasn't gonna miss that shit. And that's a huge fan of tag team wrestling. It's just so fun. just great to see the Hardys just right back home. But what was interesting to me was the fact that they came straight back to their Hardy Boys music. So I don't think that the broken gimmick won't be I mean, portrayed we, for now. But that that's Matt that's did pretty, have the Matt hair. did have a yeah, streak. He, so, you know, it's... But all in all, it is fantastic to see the Hardy Boys back. And I now that we know that the new Raw Tag Team Champions, we know which brand they're going to be on. Of course, on Raw, but I would put them on Team SmackDown because they could use it. Yeah, we're past Sarah. that point now. <laughs> Both divisions need something. Because <laughs> yeah, I, so I, I was um, going into this match like, I really don't care. We actually talked about it yeah. on the preview show. I was like, I don't, okay. I don't, I don't they, care. They, I, I have no interest in the Raw Tag Team division, or I had. They no. they gave us an honest reason to be interested in. Yeah. And full disclosure, I am a huge Jeff Hardy fan. I mean, Matt Hardy as well. But growing up, Jeff Hardy was my favorite wrestler and still is. Um, and I think it's absolutely great to see both Matt and Jeff uh, seeing what they can bring to the table and certainly revitalizing the Raw Tag Team division because they were in dire straits. Yeah, what were you saying? Because um, we actually talked about Jeff Hardy uh, in the stands. So, um... Not only am I thankful to see them back in the tag team division because I just love seeing what they do in the ring, um, particularly as it pertains to Jeff, I'm thankful that he's back because he's living out his dream again. He's closing, coming on the closing part of his career, and he's clean. And the biggest issue for Jeff is we're all familiar with the drug issues yeah. that Jeff used to have, um, and I think his story is certainly one that... Uh, uh, is one that he can be proud of and the fact that he's come back with a warm welcome from the fans uh, not just because of his presence but because spiritually he's in a better place now um, I think this return means all the more to him and I'm certainly interested to see where the tag team division can go and how they can build off of this and we, we didn't even address the spots oh, oh yeah the speaking of on, Jeff the yeah. spots are off the top <laughs> of, the, of that ladder that could that been, was that was a crazy. lot of stuff that could have went wrong, and thankfully, it went right. Yeah, and I I saw it coming from a mile away. Like yeah. I saw him setting up, and I we all know Jeff is crazy as the hell. The twist of fate from He's Matt. Crazy. The twist off, of fate from Matt mm -hmm. off the off the, off the ladder. ladder as well. Yep. Mm -hmm. it's gonna be interesting to see how Enzo Big Cass, Gallus Anderson, Cesaro, and Sheamus are gonna react to this because. You know they were completely overshadowed yeah. throughout this whole thing. Who, like, I mean, like, granted, like, was there really anything to like overshadow them 
Like, yeah. They didn't need much to overshadow them. Yeah, it mean, is what it is. But yeah, all in all, great to see the Hardy Boys back in WWE. Glad to have you back home, boys. Is there any? Oh, um, the duel. Uh, what is it? The Cesaro swing yeah. and the oh, beats the, of the Bowery. Byron. Yeah, that was good stuff. I don't know how I, far, I like that. I don't know how far they got because you know the crowd chants ten anytime a multiple you know counting. Spot and then happens. they don't even they just count by second or it, it's some weird shit you need to count rotation so if if i'm turning around you know boom 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 boom. when i turn back to my uh, uh, spot where I, yeah that's one that's <laughs> one you, you, you they just count whenever the hell they want to they Right hopefully, there. hopefully Cesaro's actually okay as well, because there was a point where he slipped off the ladder and his mm. leg got oh, caught. Oh, his leg got caught. That could have been a broken ankle, yeah. some some broken <laughs> bones there. But it it looked like he got up um, a few you seconds guys, after. Uh, he he he's a tough. I told you, be right there. Real quick, I told you guys that I thought there was the right move to give the Hardys uh, the championships already because you can't have a big moment like that happen and then for them to come out and lose again. Did y'all think it was a, a good move to put the belts on the Hardys? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I don't I don't care about any of those other teams. So. This, this saved this match. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it did, dude. Okay, next match here was John Cena and soon-to-be uh, <laughs> Nicole <laughs> Cena. Go. Versus Miz and Maurice, and this is one of those situations where it wasn't about the match oh, it itself. Wasn't. It wasn't. Nope. It was about what happened after the match. Because let's go ahead and call a spade a spade. This match was there. It, it was yeah, there. Yeah. It, it, like I said, I told you it was gonna be Cena and Miz, pretty much the only thing. Time time, which is fun. Which, which is fun. Like you're gonna have these celebrity type matches because it's pretty much for promotion or or PR reasons and honestly if a person that watches either Total Divas or Total Bellas isn't going to be interested in the match itself they're going to be interested to see what the story is going to be afterwards but the thing is like even if it was someone who watched Total Divas and Total Bellas like I didn't even get enough from Nikki and Maurice they didn't they didn't give me an opportunity it, it's very clear that that is not former longer longest reigning divas champion of all time maurice that's mm-hmm. that's the wife's that's the mrs wife. wife maurice that that's the yeah. um manager yeah. valet yeah she didn't maurice. Even do like a hold or yeah. like any wrestling hold yeah in she did not want to get in the ring at all that's how it was booked like she didn't want to get in there like not even to just slap nikki like you, wouldn't you want to do that like get your hands on her but she shake her, her a rope. little bit or something well she, 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 she did she did, she did her ride or die stuff she yeah did, she didn't interfere i mean but that spear that Nikki gave yeah that was good stuff. Stuff. The, mm-hmm. the in-ring work of the male to female uh and their counterparts kind of mirrored the the build for this match and that's not to say anything bad about the, the builder in any Which way we knew. but uh it was you know i could say a good um 80 the male superstars and 20 yeah. percent nikki and maurice but they did their part um they served see, it well. see i still wanted weird. to see more from uh nikki and maurice i, I would have enjoyed you know when you say something like i'm gonna break you bitch well no, let's show it break her um, break her do it real quick i'm gonna say this though people have seen it kicks out weird like the way he just kicks out it's just like one Two, you gotta know like, his got shoulders hop. off the mat. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's like, good. Like, he just hops. <laughs> Not even a two. But kick. what after the match was what everybody is talking about. Yes, um, and it, can I just say that was beautiful. Oh, we've got his it reaction really, on yeah, video. We, we, we get, you'll see I haven't it. even seen uh, what whatever you posted on Twitter, but um, that was. It, it was beautiful. The story that he was telling about her in surgery and not knowing what was going on and asking her a question, that was wonderful. And um, I w- that's going to be one of the most uh, look talked back. about things that happened at this WrestleMania. At- like, um, ju- that, I- I'm quite sure headlines are going to be yes. all over oh. the damn place. And I- I'm so happy for them. I really am. That 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 was wonderful stuff. So yeah, nothing, yeah, nothing Cena and Nikki Bella being engaged. If this is what they want, awesome. it's harmless. Yeah, they they shared the moment of their their lives with sixty thousand of their closest and friends. That, and, and, I hate to say this, and I hate to say this, but as fans, that that kind of makes that that kind of makes us fans sometimes selfish because 
we kind of forget that these guys are actual human beings at the end of the day. And while we would have wanted to see Cena and Miz in more prominent roles, we got to keep in mind that, one, they don't come up with this stuff. And two, they were probably all well and fine with it. So well, I mean, they gave me some very entertaining moments in the build-up for it. Yeah. And um, the payoff with Nikki yeah, and they... Cena getting engaged. Shit. Yeah. I... I mean, I'm cool with it. Maybe you could have put John Cena in a bigger match and gotten something um, There are just some fans but... out there that still see that. That is what I'm saying. Well, then they, okay. they, they're going into business for themselves because I, I thoroughly enjoyed this. Yeah, this was this was a very nice moment. And I was telling Dalton this uh, while we were in the crowd. The funny thing about this is the two big things that The Miz has you know waged against John Cena and Nikki Bella, that they're not married and that they're all about their brand. The funny thing yeah. about him proposing <laughs> to Nikki so at WrestleMania, WrestleMania on the this huge stage, this huge platform, that kind of plays into the whole branding. Yeah, but but, but they think we're dumb, branding. so we're not supposed to really think about that kind of stuff. Yeah, but um, yeah, but congratulations to them. Yeah, I can't wait to see all of this. On, I, uh, we Bells. already know you can't. I cannot wait. Um, next up, we have Seth Rollins versus Triple H in a non-sanctioned match. Um, mm -hmm. A great finish to an otherwise lame match. Uh, so I uh, I missed the entrances to this, and actually the part. Oh, of the Triple plug. H is just so so good. But thankfully, my girlfriend holding me down. She got Triple H's entrance um it recorded for me. Um, the one issue I have with Triple H, match, Triple H matches as of late is that they're a little too methodical for my taste. Slow. He tends to slowly... And I understand that's his style. He, Seth Rollins walked in with a knee injury. It's completely logical for him to attack the knee and work him over and b break him down to his weakest point. The yeah. issue that I have is this match was a non-sanctioned match, and for the good... Mm, first wrestling 10 minutes, I would say it was, as Cass mentioned, wrestled as if it was a normal match before weapons came in. And if you're going to establish that anything goes, I would have liked Seth to come out swinging sooner. But Triple H worked him over to a point to break him down slowly, to humiliate him. Um, and I understand why he did it. But personally, this match wasn't that visually stimulating until we got to the finish. Yeah, I missed um, the first few minutes of the match, and I guess I came into the point where it started to actually pick up. Um, pick up, and at the end when they were battling, you know, and jockeying for positioning with the pedigree counters and stuff that like I that. That I found a little ridiculous. Oh, really? I like that part. Okay. I liked it, but then I, I have my issues with Seth Rollins even still using the pedigree. You know, I have an issue point. with you him use going for a pedigree. I have an issue with him going for a move like the Phoenix Splash, and then that doesn't put Triple H away. I don't like it when you pull out those big type of moves because moves like that should honestly end a match. That's a move that nobody should be kicking out of. Stephanie uh, getting um, that was awkward thrown through the uh, table. Awkward. That no, I'm talking the fact that how she just kept like getting up on the apron. The Ride or die time. chick, right there. I just she can't she, stand she got up at um, important parts of the match trying to help Triple H out, and that one like <laughs> that. Might, I didn't even woo. see the table. Like yeah. Yeah. whenever it was set up, I you weren't. I there wasn't yet. there. Yeah. So yeah. when she went crashing down and to see her crash to the table, I was right. like, oh, shit, there we go. And I like H's, that. That was and cool. And Triple H's reaction when he saw that and he just automatically loses oh, his just, mind, just, which he should, mm -hmm. which he should have done. And then Rollins hit the pedigree and Rollins got his um, baby face triumphant win at WrestleMania. I mean, you are me. I said in the preview, like, I thought Triple H, I wouldn't have been mad if Triple H won, but I wouldn't have cared if Rollins had won. Mm -hmm. But it's good to see Rollins have that moment, I guess. He did. I like the fact that he came up with the torch, though. Yeah, that was a nice little... That, um, that entrance was... Uh, so deep, but one of the funny parts of this match was uh, Triple H, when he had uh, Seth Rollins locked into the submission on the outside of the ring, and Seth Rollins was just grabbing for shit that under the ring. Because, you know, it was a rope break in a non tension match, right? <laughs> yeah. No, I'm talking about when... Uh, it was they were on the outside of the ring, and oh, oh, Seth Rollins was ring. pulling yeah, for yeah. stuff, yeah. and he pulls out the sledgehammer. Triple H is like, you know what's funny? That what? sledgehammer, <laughs> the sledgehammer didn't even come into play. Not once, once that, once that came out, did it? 
Yes, it did. Yeah, I think it he did. He got a stomach shot in there, a mm-hmm. one or two. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because that's when uh, they, they brought it into the ring, and you were asking what was the sledgehammer actually made out of. Yeah. yeah someone said rubber. Yeah. <laughs> but, um... Interesting to where Rollins goes from here, I will say that. Cause... Yeah. From what I saw in the match, I did uh, like um, what I saw. It, it This was probably my, honestly, my uh, second to least favorite match with the... the Raw Divas Championship or Women's Championship. Yeah, I'm what, sorry. What was that word? <laughs> Raw Women's Championship taking uh, the cake on the worst match of the. He's season. like, damn, this match is so bad that you're going back to co- being called Divas. <laughs> oh, we got The WWE Championship match. Oh man. Randy Orton versus Bray Wyatt. We have a new WWE Champion and Randy Orton. There was some re- weird stuff going on in this match. Very weird. Like what was that the, the overhead green? camera, and. On the mat, there were maggots, earthworms, earthworms. I don't know what the hell with the other grasshoppers, something. I don't know something gross. Yeah, something nasty. So, I did not understand. We already addressed that this feud was. uh, You really had to suspend disbelief. And I will say the video package. I watched the you know I watched the video package prior to the match, and it was very entertaining. the video package. I mean, the, come on, hold on. Give credit where credit is due. The WWE video production team can make horseshit look like. Gold. I love Triple H. However, video package. however, this match was very boring. Not to mention the quick. images. The it images, was weirdly booked. It was quick. Like they were hitting like their like their signature moves like quick with each other because I think they were like pressed for time or something like that. I don't get why the images that were uh, displayed overhead of the different uh, creatures that were placed on the mat i don't know if you know without having commentary we, i'm not sure if we're supposed to interpret that as sister abigail um taking her place over in the arena um because the images didn't play into the finish they yeah. were just placed randomly in three different spots throughout the match the match ended with an rko and it wasn't randy didn't seem to uh visually be distracted by any of the images because he was on his back for all three. Well, you know what the thing is? When all of that stuff was happening off screen, when um, Bray Wyatt was giving Randy Orton a tour of the Wyatt family compound, <laughs> Randy must have told him. He was like, oh, you know, man, I'm, I'm scared of earthworms. maggots and earthworms. And honestly, the one issue, another issue that I have with this is the fact that why they were trying to be creative with what they were trying to do with those images. I don't like that kind of pokiness because... That's just something that you have. One we haven't seen in WWE practically in a while. It's just like when we had the Boogeyman. When you talk about earthworms going all out, I'm, I'm talking. If you gonna do that kind of stuff, I want that Boogeyman earthworms. Not not this like I graphic. Want real earthworms. Yeah, not this graphic stuff. Because again, like don't mention like it didn't play into the fish. And yes, I'm Bray Wyatt is now still undefeated at WrestleMania, being zero and. Three and he walked in as. So you mean the opposite of undefeated? Randy won. Yeah, but you see, it, it's way like it's like if people hit the <laughs> <three, laughs> it. But yeah, I don't know why. Right, but Randy won't be the WWE champion. Like, really? I, I I was saying the same thing with Bray Wyatt as champion. So. Get give the title back to AJ, please. Yeah, give yeah. it back there. Rematch <laughs> clause. Where you at? But um. This match was, it's like they came out of the gate, like, firing, just going, mm-hmm. but it, nothing was connecting to me. Like, I, I felt like this match didn't really tell a story that I could, uh, you know, you, you, you say WrestleMania is the ultimate thrill ride. It's like, there was never any point where I felt like I was, you know, riding the wave with them. It's like, okay. And this what? just proves even more that Bray Wyatt should not have been champion in the first place. I mean, nice wanted, RKOs from Randy. When he won mm-hmm. that elimination chair. Like, this is just further boozy because look what happened to him a month, about a few months later. He <laughs> loses it, and he was just nothing more than just a transitional champion. And I don't like it when WWE has the transitional champions because it just makes the world, it just makes either the world women's or tag championships just look completely pointless and they're just props. And all that story they burn through to get to this. Randy this. Orton. Yeah, yes, people. This is the future. The future is Randy Orton. Okay, we're going to jump ahead just a little bit. Skip over one match because I guess we'll leave that for the end um, since we already talked about uh, 
the actual main event. But we had the six pack challenge for the SmackDown Women's Championship. Alexa Bliss, Natalia, Carmella, Becky Lynch, and Mickey James. And also a returning Naomi with her hometown crowd right here yeah. in Orlando, mm -hmm. Florida. This was another one of those situations where it's, uh, place, it, it, it was it was more so about what happened. Um, it was just about the finish. Celebration. Yeah, and then and Naomi's celebration, which was awesome. Oh, yeah, it was. It was. Like, this, just, this match just had poor placement. In my favorite videos, I know we'll get into talking about it to it next, but it's just like when you put them after what we had just saw prior to, and you want the six women that we've been seeing on SmackDown since the brand split, you want them to try to follow that. I would have more preferred to put this like literally like right at the start of the show. At least you probably yeah. would have had more. Here's the thing: you could have still had the the, the feel good moment for Naomi. You could have had a good kickoff. To many, but yeah, this just got bad placement on the car. And honestly, the match was just way too quick. Like you can tell, like they were pressed for time when it came to this. So yeah, I felt that uh, this matchup. Uh, if I'm being quite honest, the only things I remember are it picking up when Naomi had her crossbody over the top rope, Which and then weird. her finish. Mm -hmm. If I'm being 100 percent honest, I don't remember any of the spots leading up to the finish because, to be quite honest, there wasn't a whole lot of. There was spots. the was uh, double sharpshooter. Which was a little bit of a failure. But granted. But it's... I, like know, a double be, German suplex that spot. Though. That was kind of, you know, yeah. too. What was, since when has Naomi been a, a specialist when it comes to submissions? Because when she had the hold in... When, which, the hold that she had Alexa Bliss, I've never seen her, like, pull that out. Because it, like I felt the match kind of felt flat a bit she does have a submission finisher though it's just we i haven't seen her like utilize as much but that mm -hmm. doesn't take away from the whole to be established for the hometown feel but yeah like this this guy i can't tell the dude people this guy was literally oh. like <laughs> was like literally had the song in his head no because like, like no music playing <laughs> because i was watching um what was it uh Triple H was it Triple H versus no it was Randy Orton versus um Bray Wyatt. Bray Wyatt and I was just sitting there going like this and Cass is like Jay there's no music playing and I was like oh shit I, I like in I'm my listening. mind I was listening to Naomi's theme because I was getting myself ready For, like I was getting my glow? yeah I was getting myself ready to feel the glow and I was like yeah it looks great at night oh it oh, really it does that's, great at night. that's honestly <laughs> probably uh, the leading reason as to why this match was moved, and I understand mm -hmm. the, the political yeah. reasoning behind you know the fan support wanting this match the, to be moved, but you can't do the a WWE glow. like oh we 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 listen to you we heard you <laughs> we can't turn a dark light on at yeah. five no they were like they were like oh shit Naomi's entrance yeah, yeah. It used to be dark yeah <laughs> but but I will say the post match celebration was was very it was good. Awesome. yeah that that one was it was and the final match we're going to be discussing it actually happened before. Um, yeah, Naomi winning minutes. her championship. Uh, Brock Lesnar versus Goldberg for the Universal Championship. Brock Lesnar is your new Universal Champion. It lasted five minutes. I'm, I'm not really sure about the total time, but I do believe... I know I said something like eight minutes. Um, I do believe the match lasted longer than I anticipated it would. Mm -hmm. um, and it wasn't just... Clearly, it wasn't just spear, yeah. spear, jackhammer, pin. Or it wasn't just F5 yeah. pin. I respect the fact that uh, Goldberg and Lesnar actually went outside the ring. There was a barricade spot. Um, there was 10, count them 10. And this is this is one of those yes. times where I actually enjoyed the 10 it chance. Mm -hmm. It worked because it was organic and there actually was something, a 10, multiple yeah. 10 actually we, happening. We could feel it coming on and, and I like how... Um, Brock played to the crowd because you know, the crowd is like 10, 10, 10, 10. Then he finally does it and he's like, yeah. Oh, no, he, oh, he was feeling shit. himself. He yeah. was, Brock was definitely feeling himself tonight. Like, this match, like, I don't know about you guys, but from what we've seen from a Goldberg and Lesnar leading into Mania, it's just so hard to be like, wow, Goldberg dominated Brock this entire time. And all it took was like five to eight minutes in the ring. It said four forty-five on Wikipedia. I mean, it, it said like what? Four forty-five. Hey, so I was close. I mean, he. I mean, Heyman did say that the longer a Goldberg match goes, the more the if, uh, match favors the opponent. Can I say something? I was into every single second of this match. 
I okay. was. And I think it's so weird what WWE did with this one. It's because, like, the first match was so quick. Mm. And then um, with Goldberg getting the best of Brock Lesnar in the Royal Rumble, mm-hmm. it's like you had absolutely no idea when this match was going to end. It could end with the first move, the second move. It could end within the first you know um 90 seconds so it's like you had to be into it and you're like oh shit anytime some big move happened you're like oh my god is this gonna be the end of it is this gonna be the finish and that's how i was the whole match because with the craziness of the booking of their previous match there was so much uncertainty going into this one where it's like it could end like that so you have to be like you know really on it and paying attention because you don't want to you know be sitting around when the you know when the bell rings and i was on the edge of my seat throughout this entire thing and um one point in the match i thought was funny was the look on goldberg's face after brock lesnar kicked right, out of the jackhammer the he's yeah. like oh shit i don't have any more moves left <laughs> right what do P- i do ran out of pp have to use and struggle <laughs> lesnar is our but you just mentioned there our new Universal Champion on Raw. I believe our fourth Universal Champion since this title. Finn Balor, uh, Kevin, Kevin Owens, Owens, Owens yeah, Goldberg, Goldberg Lesnar. Brock and Lesnar. Uh, here's the thing, Jay. I get your your mentality of how the Universal Champion should be, but it's just I'm looking at it from a perspective of just like it's going to be hard for the main roster guys to find something to fight for. So be it. I mean, it's the Universal Championship, and in the universe we have planets. Every once in a while a planet falls out of orbit, in which case... You know what? (laughs) Here's how we should look at it. Instead of Brock Lesnar being off TV, he's, you know, defending the championship on Mars somewhere. It's just kind of hard. (laughs) I I just... I just still cannot get... Fight over the number one contendership. Boom. Develop a hierarchy in WWE. And watch at SummerSlam, we'll get Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns the Universal title. If if it means okay, if it means Lesnar's off TV and the title is too, at least the title's not being featured in a you know a friendship comedy angle that it plays second fiddle. Granted, to. I mean honestly, there's not like there's well, actually if you think about it, there's not really that many contenders for the Universal Championship other than either Braun or Reigns. Build them up. Now you have the opportunity to do so because you have to do something big to fill in the gap that's going to be by the long, Universal Championship yes. not being there. But between now and August, and we're, we're planning on going there, so it's like it's going to be a pretty much abysmal trying to get through Raw every single week. You say that as if the Universal Championship was this. Big crowning item. jewel of Raw. Like, oh my God, since it's it gone some, now. Yeah, I know, uh, but the fact the that... The horror. I, I, I get that, but it's just like... I like it when you have a show when the guys have a purpose of fighting for something in their perspective divisions. Now it's like if the main eventers have nothing to fight for, that means they're going to have to either get... Like you said, fight over the no one contendership, or yet find a but way. But what's wrong with that? The man nothing, the number one nothing's wrong with that, but it's like the master, there's nobody's there. The master of the dojo isn't always present. Sometimes, sometimes you have to prove yourself by you know the lower ranking contenders until you know said master. Watch like your Pokemon gyms. Watch the yeah. United you have States to go through a few junior trainers before you get to Brock. Boom. Well, the United States Championship, I, we might as well get used to that being the number one uh, championship. On the Rome number because. one championship is a women's title. I don't even count that. Which one? Why not, Cass? I, again, it's just revolving around the same women all these months. I just, I'm just tired of it. I'm sorry, but I'm just tired of it. I do need I need to, to pull up the uh, WWE Championship during the Attitude Era? Do I no, need, oh, do I need oh, to do that? Mind. That's a good point. Do I need to? <laughs> no, you don't. Because we that, can. That's a good point. <laughs> that's a good point. Um, thank you all for tuning in. We... Are done with this, I believe. Any closing co- thoughts on WrestleMania? I had a blast. Oh yeah, I, I definitely did, and I actually can't wait to go when I get back home to actually go back and watch this whole thing again because I really want to hear like what everybody really had to say from the screen versus me seeing it live, and it definitely shows that different dynamic of live versus on TV. So yeah, really good experience overall. Got to see Taker's uh, 
final match at my first WrestleMania, it had me in tears. And I and I finally people got to say, You suck to Kurt Angle and it was awesome. Yeah. There's uh this was a extremely gratifying experience. Um we've got the pictures, videos and tweets to prove it. Um <laughs> extremely thankful that I got to see Undertaker in his very last match and thank you, uh, man. the yeah, thank you, Jay, uh, Dead Man. Jay Cass can attest I had chills at several points throughout this evening. Uh, I'm so happy that Jeff Hardy is back and he's in a better place. My favorite wrestler has come home. Um, and I will definitely be wanting to do this again. Our plan is to go to SummerSlam in Brooklyn this, this coming August. So uh, we will be doing this again. And I'm, I'm sure we're going to enjoy ourselves then, too. Yeah. Yes. Uh, thank you all for uh, tuning in. Oh, I guess I can give my final thoughts, too. Um, so I saw some great stuff at WrestleMania. Some matches that um, maybe they surprised me. And I just, just looking at things from a different perspective, I saw, uh, you know, stories and uh, moments that I really enjoyed. And some other stuff that I was crossing my fingers, hoping that WWE would do the right thing. But they didn't. They didn't. But overall, had a fucking blast. Um, really, maybe I'll think something differently about the show <laughs> after I watch it, you know, on the network. But just yeah. being there live, successful. There's event. nothing like a live nothing WWE, like especially it. WrestleMania. It, mm-hmm. It's just and it, <laughs> over the top. Yeah, just just grand. But and Jay, it, it's okay because we we all got to do the same thing because the wiser ones are smarting up at some point. But, um, what does that even mean? I'm trying. I'm trying to like. I'm trying to like make a joke out of this, but yeah, it's failing. <laughs> we need to go to bed, man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's up. It's up. We really do because you're looking at your. I'm looking at a watch I don't have. My yeah. voice is gone. Yeah. All right, it's time to end this. All right, Bye. Guys. Later. <laughs>